I've talked a lot about S. Craig Zoller on this channel before. I love the guy's storytelling, and he's a huge influence on my own writing. But there's one aspect of his work that drives me nuts, and it has absolutely nothing to do with the actual work itself. It has to do with this weird political projection that people insist on doing to his stories, despite them being, in my eyes, decidedly apolitical. His movies and books present no authorial political opinion, despite any of the clickbaity headlines you may have read, to directly quote Zoller from his interview with Slash Film. I'm not politically driven at all, so it's not a debate for me to get into. I'm going to be ranting a bit here, and I know I'll get shit for this video. I mean, hell, I lost like 50 subscribers the day I uploaded a Black Lives Matter video, and I was glad to see the racist bastards go. But this whole political claiming of Zoller's stories just really bothers me. I guess because I love Zoller's writing, but I'm on the opposite end of the political spectrum as the side that keeps trying to claim ownership of his stories. I mean, I'm as leftist as you can get. I'm left or the left. I'm beyond left. You're like... Like, beyond meat, I'm beyond left. And there's been no real pushback for his work, as far as I can tell. With Dragged Across Concrete in particular, there has been both a concerted effort among right-wingers to claim the film as their own, and this reflexive distancing by left-wingers who don't want to be associated with anything that could be misconstrued as right-wing. I put it to you that Dragged Across Concrete, along with the rest of Zoller's of, presents absolutely no political polemic. Oh, and gee, I wonder where I'm getting that from. Uh, it must be from Zoller himself repeatedly saying in interviews that he is pushing absolutely no political agenda. Listen to this quote. It's pretty hard to step away and say there's this singular viewpoint from all of these characters and that all these scenes reflect it. In fact, I think it's impossible. I think one needs to ignore a lot of what certain characters do and then say, well, what these characters are doing and saying, that's what the author really feels. So then what you're doing is bringing in your judgment of the author and looking for evidence to support it rather than looking at the material that's at hand. End quote. And yes, exactly, that's plainly obvious from the material. Yet what does the article containing this interview get titled? They title it, The Hollywood Filmmaker Making Movies for the MAGA Crowd. What the fuck? How do you get that from what he said? It's such a blatant clickbaity mischaracterization. The thing is, Zoller doesn't cast any judgment on his characters as a writer. And I think this is what opens up his work to criticism or debate through this political lens that people seem to want to view his work through, despite there being no political stance endorsed in any of his work. It seems like people from anywhere on the political spectrum could watch or read one of Zoller's stories and think he shares and is expressing their personal viewpoints. And I think this comes down to the way that he objectively presents characters with highly specific points of view. Never mind the fact that different characters throughout the story express different viewpoints. People seem to like to latch onto a particular character and deem them a mouthpiece for the author. There are a bunch of people that think Bone Tomahawk is a Christian conservative film. And before I completely dispel that, let me set up why some people think this. Patrick Wilson's character in Bone Tomahawk is an outspoken Christian, and he's also the one who saves the day in the end, and is the most admirable, good-hearted character out of the bunch. So some people see that connection, and they think, that must mean the film is pushing a Christian agenda, that the director is a Christian and he wants to get that message out there. Which, to quote Zoller directly, is probably not the case with a Jew-turned-atheist such as myself. Do you see what I'm driving at here? That people project their own beliefs onto the creator of a piece of work when they see something they feel reflected in one of the characters, regardless of what any other characters say or think to the contrary, and ignoring the fact that characters do not just speak the author's mind all of the time, at least not with any good storytelling. You can find this type of projection all over the place. Take Black Hawk Down as a random example. It's a war film, lots of action, whatever, but if you look up the battle scenes on YouTube and you scan in the comments, you will find the most heinous, racist shit you've ever seen in your life. Because there are fucked up people who like it for the wrong reasons. They like it because it's set in Somalia and it's African locals getting killed. It's genuinely disturbing that it became some kind of racist murder fantasy for a particular group of people. But is that the fault of Ridley Scott or the writers? Of course it's not. That's obviously not their intention. The way certain people perceive the film and lay their own viewpoints onto it shouldn't reflect on the creators or even the film itself when the work itself doesn't validate that perspective. It just presents it. Some people like The Shield because they think Vic Mackey is awesome for breaking all the rules and being racist and brutalizing suspects and stuff, somehow missing the point that the whole show is about how terrible of a person he is. That isn't the show's fault, it's the fault of a particular fucked up portion of the audience. Yet it seems like when the same fucked up portion of the audience likes Zoller's work, 
It is the creator's fault. Many people seem to want to assume that Zeller shares the thoughts and ideals of his characters. And to think that, you have to ignore all the characters who express other ideals within the same films. One of the things I personally found most likable about the protagonist of his latest novel, The Slanted Gutter, was how vehemently anti-police he was. He even wonders out loud at one point if he killed enough cops to get into heaven. But does that mean that S. Craig Zoller is ACAB in real life? Is he anti-police? I don't think so. I mean, to my knowledge, he's never spoken publicly of his opinion on these kinds of subjects. And he has plenty of police characters shown in both positive and negative lights and other stories. So why should that conclusion and other endorsement conclusions in the same vein be drawn? Do you see my point that these stories aren't presenting a political stance as an endorsement? They're about presenting honest characters from different walks of life with different opinions. To quote Zoller directly, I am not looking for films to express values. My characters drive my movies. And another direct quote from him, it's not glamorizing or condemning because I'm not making this movie to make a political point. But then even the publication that conducted these interviews goes on to ignore what he says and insists that there's another narrative at play. Why have him on to interview him if you're going to ignore everything he says? It was this whole concerted right-wing effort to take ownership of dragged across concrete that especially pissed me off. Because I've spoken to several people who have avoided watching dragged across concrete because of this perceived MAGA association. Even though that whole fucking association is a fabrication. And these MAGA people are trying to claim Zoller as their filmmaker when that's just so clearly not the case. When you just look at the material from an objective point of view, read the film and it's clear. Zeller puts characters with different perspectives into his films because it distinguishes them, makes them more real, and creates conflict between them. Not because one character in particular is meant to voice his own polemic. MAGA people apparently like and sympathize with the Ridgeman character. They like him because he's racist, aka liking the film for the wrong reasons, and then deciding that your own political views must be shared by the author because of one character's opinions, ignoring the opposing opinions of the other characters in the film, and ignoring the fact that you could just as easily read Ridgeman being racist as an indictment of the systemic racism of U.S. law enforcement, if you're coming from the other end of the spectrum. There's no political statement being made by the author, and there's no endorsement being given. In what world does showing cops being racist equal an endorsement of that racism? You can read Drag the Cross Concrete as leftist just as easily as you can claim it's right wing. To make this bullshit mag claim on the film because of the Ridgeman character's politics, you have to completely ignore the other protagonist of the film, the infinitely more likable Tory Kittles, who is not racist, who we learn so much more about on a human level, and who wins in the end because he's so much smarter and empathetic than any of the racist fuckers in the movie give him credit for. He's the character we're introduced to first for fuck's sake, our window into this world. He's our POV character to root for throughout, yet this whole mega argument has to pretend he's not in the film. How is this scene at the end anything other than the good guy and bad guy showing down? The good guy who had enough kindness and empathy to be willing to let the bad guy live until the bad guy tries to double cross him at the last moment. You fucking dumbass. I wasn't gonna blackmail you. My word's good. I should have trusted a nigga. <laughs> And to quote Zoller about his Dragged Across Concrete characters from his interview on RogerEbert.com, you understand why they're doing what they're doing. And then in terms of what you bring, in terms of your own outlook, you can land in the camp of wanting Group A to win or Group B to win, or want Group A and B to both win, or wanting everyone to lose. That's what he's doing, presenting these different teams with their opposing viewpoints, and it's only certain audience members who are insisting that one side is better or worse than the other. Yet despite all of that, one of the first major reviews for the film after its premiere at the Venice Film Festival from the Daily Beast called it a vile, racist, right-wing fantasy, ignoring everything that didn't suit that charged narrative and setting the stage for the right-wing ownership claim over the film, and led to things like this fucking awful dragged across concrete and the red pill video that tries to jam a narrative into the film that is so obviously not in the film. And that video was so disgustingly misogynistic and pushing such brain-dead arguments it isn't even on YouTube anymore. It had to be re-uploaded to BitChute, which is known for hosting far-right douchebags and conspiracy theorists. And that video existing is part of what pissed me off enough to make this video, because it used to be the top recommended video beside my own Dragged Across Concrete video essay. 
And I genuinely think that that Daily Beast review had the opposite of the intended effect as a rebuke, and it's what led to all these mega fucks trying to say the movie was made just for them and belongs to them. I would suggest reading interviews with Zoller to more fully understand how he approaches his stories from a place of character first and foremost. He says that he as a person is not political, but he might write characters who are from anywhere on the political spectrum, and the voices of those diverse characters need to be true. I'm going to link one particular Zoller interview in the description where he talks a lot about the political reaction to his work, so check that out for even more context. One interesting nugget he shares in that is that an early script, the one that got him started in the film industry pretty much, was perceived as being extremely far left-wing. Though again, he was sticking to his process of letting the characters drive the story and not pushing any of his own agendas in there. And I'll close out this video with one more Zoller quote from that specific interview linked in the description. He said, I wish people looked at the movie more instead of trying to figure out who I am. So, thanks for watching this video. I know it got a little heated. I wouldn't be surprised if things get heated in the comments too, but whatever. Subscribe and stick around for less ranty stuff.